They say the mountain is the top I say that just scratch the surface yeah, we started at the bottom with no option but to go up. You know what hurt is. What's up, guys? This is Kazi. Welcome to episode two of Commercial versus Film Grading. Episode one is up here. Check it out. And it was really well received. I was super stoked that you guys got the message. This series really came from your guys' concerns because a lot of you think that, hey, if we're spending 40, 50 minutes per shot, you know, how long is it going to take to grade a feature film? And here, I take you through step by step and show you the different methodology that goes into working on a commercial versus film. And you guys know I'm always coming up with innovative ideas so you guys can learn new tools and really know your way around Resolve. And this time I'm going to be using tons of brand new techniques that you haven't seen on this channel. So grab a notebook, get ready, and for those that want to level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage, how to get the clean white look, it's the go-to commercial look, how to get the creamy film look, how to fix the dreaded gamma shift, and much, much more. Link is in the description. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, make sure to hit a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm dropping value bombs there every single day. Let's roll the intro. All right, I'm super pumped about this one. First of all, we're gonna create a commercial look. So let's just watch this shot and see what we got here. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Absolutely love it. I mean, we can just already see the potential, what can be done to it. So first thing that I'm going to do is find my hero frame. And I think something like that is looking pretty good as of now. Like my main focus is this dude. And then we're going to work around basically him in the shot. So um, this is going to be a very simple look not in terms of like the way it's going to look, but the way I'm going to create it. So I'm not going to be using any noise reduction in this one. So first node is just going to be our contrast. And then the second is going to be our saturation. Third is going to be our creative LUT. Okay. So let's just start naming them. So this is exposure. This one is going to be my saturation. Actually, you know what? This one is going to be balance and saturation. And then this is going to be the Kodak 2383. It's a very, very popular LUT. And it's a film LUT. So you guys know I hate using LUTs, but I hate using just anybody's LUTs that are out there. Everybody sells LUTs nowadays. And I'm going to be using LUTs that are provided to you by DaVinci Resolve and also are used in movies. It's probably one of the most uh, popular LUT. This was even used on Joker. So just to give you an idea. And then we're going to move on and create a hue versus options and then after that i'm going to create another node and this is going to be our skin then we're going to do a parallel node and this is going to be my clean background okay so we're going to really crisp up the background with this node and then we're going to move on and this node is going to be my look adjustment pretty much and also global adjustment so i'm going to pull it down this is basically let's just call it global adjustment okay so let's just keep it at that. So before I even do the exposure, the thing about using LUTs is that you have to be very methodical about it. Okay, so I'm going to drop in the LUT first. And this is under Film Looks in DaVinci Resolve. Like I said, it's their LUTs. It's available to everyone that owns the software. And it might be a paid version thing or might not. I'm not sure. But you can check it out. But for paid version, obviously, it's there. We're going to be using a Kodak 2383 D55 Rec709 LUT. And this is basically a warmer version. And then as the number goes higher here, it gets cooler. Okay. So we're going for this um, warm look. And I'm going to apply this LUT. And once we apply it, I mean, you know, this is why I always say if you don't know what to do or, you know, how to color grade, don't use LUTs because of this. Because everything is crushed and it looks weird and 
this is just not a good place to be in at all. All my nodes are placed very methodically and it all makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my exposure now because this is a Rex 7 and 9 LUT. So after we apply this, it crushes a lot of the information. If I were to do my exposure adjustments afterwards, that information that we lost here is pretty much lost. It's not going to come back. So that's why I have to do it before the creative LUT node. So where I can still have the log characteristics to my image where I can do all the push and pull without degrading my footage. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to raise my gamma. I'm going to bring my gain down just a little bit. And I'm going to raise my gamma a little more. Let's just make it a little bit bigger too so you guys can see it better. And this is already looking pretty good. And I'm going to bring my gain down just a little bit. And then I'm going to go in my log wheels. I'm going to pull it down. But obviously now I want to control my low range to see where I can only affect the darkest parts, okay? Something like that is pretty good. Let me just see if I want to bring... So I'm going to leave my exposure settings here. And now just look at it. This is just with the LUT and now this is before we made some changes. We're going to go into our balance node and I'm going to pull up the saturation a little bit and I'm going to crank it around somewhere around 65 ish. And now we start to see some separation here. And now I'm going to show you a technique that I usually don't use. So I'm going to go in this tab under my temperature and I'm going to pull it back to kind of cool it off. Not too much though. Okay. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. So that gives it a cool look like very easily, like just see, it's just adding this really nice cinematic look just by moving this wheel. We didn't have to get crazy with anything else. So this is my balance for now, three nodes and we've come a long way. Okay. Now under hue versus options, I'm really going to finesse my skin. So I'm going to go under my hue versus hue. And I'm going to start dialing this in to see like where my skin tones just start looking really nice. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go under my hue versus saturation and raise it up. Always go crazy and then pull back. You guys know my rule. All right, so if I do before and after, we've done quite a bit of work, okay? And just mind you, we are not pulling any keys right now. This is all hue versus options. So it's going to be really easy to translate from shot to shot. I'm going to go under my hue versus hue. So this, I mean, we've done quite a bit in this node, to be honest with you. Like, just look at how much we were able to pull the skin. And now I'm going to go under my hue versus luminance and see what we need. If I raise this, I'm going to give my red a bit more depth and then I'm going to pull my yellow up just to give them a little bit more juice. Okay. I mean, come on. Like, just look at the amount of work we did in this one node without touching or creating any qualifiers. That said, now we will be creating qualifiers. So I'm going to go right here. And then in my skin node, I'm going to go under here. And let's pull his skin right here, our dude. So I'm going to go right there and hit Shift H and see what we got. I'm going to open this up a little bit. Move it around. And let's just see, hold on. So one thing that I do want to make sure right here. And then I'm going to go under my radius and I'm going to take it around 41 ish. And now this is pretty clean. Okay. And now I kind of want to go heavy. I want to take my gamma and gain at the same time and start moving it and really pull the skin tones out like quite a bit pop them almost like this okay 
Because, I mean, trust me, guys, when we're watching commercials, movies, I mean, they're pushed. They're pushed quite a bit. We just don't realize it because we don't see the look created from this. So just keep that in the back of your head. And the key holds up. It's a pretty good key. So we thought this was crazy, right? We thought that we had done so much work in this node. Now look at when we pulled our key, how far we have come. Now, obviously, we can go in here and kind of split the difference. So we can come in here and go, okay, let's just dial it back a little bit. So it's not too crazy. And now we're kind of blending it in, right? So I went to 6. 0.6, you know, which is almost halfway through. So it's splitting the difference. Okay, so that's fine. Everybody's happy now. Now I'm going to show you a really cool technique to clean this up, right? Because I just want like almost like a clean white in these areas, like crispy whites. And um, I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to go in here and we're going to select our I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. I'm going to hit shift H and I just want to grab like the highlights in my image. This is looking good. And then what I want to do is I don't want to grab the skin. And the way I'm going to do that to avoid grabbing the skin is that I just want to avoid anything that's too saturated. So if I do this and pull this back, look what's happening. Okay. And now I can just go under my blur radius and blur it out quite a bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here under my luminance versus actually, you know what, saturation versus saturation. And I'm going to grab it from here and I'm going to pull it down and just look what's happening to the sides. I just look at the sides, how much we're pulling and giving it that clean white, crisp white look. I mean, you can even see it here, the color shift to boom. And what we can do is, let me just go and adjust a couple of these parameters. Because now I'm grabbing more of his hair. Okay, so this might be better. Because now it's really grabbing majority of it. Because look at, if I punch in and you look at his hair, see what I mean? Like now it's grabbing, like just check this out. How much it cleaned up. It's almost like a sci-fi look, right? It's doing quite a bit. I just want to make sure that it doesn't steal anything from my skin tones. And once again, let's just go in here and sort of split the difference. Let's see where is it believable. You know, so we can do something like that, right? That's believable. It's still like, look at how much of it, like turning it into clean white without really screaming in our face, even right here. See, it just took out that green tint and gave it that look. So it's a really nice way to do that. Okay. And a very clean way to do that. Even like in our shadows, we see this. And now in my global adjustment, because it's a commercial, you got to keep give it a pop. Okay, you can't have too moody of a look because that's just gonna look super dark on TVs. All right, so I'm gonna click right here. And I'm just gonna start raising that. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my highlights and I'm going to pull them down until we're saved here. Okay. So something like that. That's not bad. So let's see if we want to pull it a little more. All right. So I think that pull is pretty good. We were able to pull it quite a bit. You know what though? After affecting these, I like what happens here. I do not like what happens there. So one way to control that would be to just create a window around it, like a circular window, and that's going to get rid of it. So that's a pretty good way to go about it. But another way we can try would be this, where I isolate anything that's the brightest parts, right? So literally this, and then invert it. 
So now if I come out, actually, you know what? No, the other way. Yeah, so hold on, let's go. Well, first of all, let's make this smaller and then. All right, so see, now it's keeping that crisp. It's leaving that part alone and I think I'm liking that better. Yeah, that's much better. Look at how much cleaner this is. If the skin is too much for you, you can obviously control it. I'm telling you right now, it's not. Um, and I can prove it to you right now by pulling up this shot that we're going to be creating next. Look at the skin. Look at my guy's skin and their skin. Just look at the contrast and the look they created and then how much punch they put back into his skin. So that's why I'm telling you it's not a lot, but if you do... Just think that it's a bit over the top. Obviously, we can go back in here and we can dial it back just a bit, you know, where we can just keep splitting the difference. You know, this is before, this is after. And I can even dial it back a little bit more before and after. So we're just giving it a hint and nothing too crazy. So this is our commercial look, guys. So let's check it out node by node. So I'm going to turn all of these off. And this is what we started with. And let's just park it on our hero frame. And this is our, we started with a LUT. So we dropped in a LUT. And then I did some exposure, balanced it out, cooled it off a little bit, then did our hue versus hue to really pop out the skin as much as possible, then created qualifier around the skin and popped it out a bit more. Then did the clean white to just really take out the green tint that is inherent into this LUT and just the overall, you know, the way that it was shot. And then we went into our global adjustment and popped them out for the commercial sake. And uh, I'm not going to add grain to it because in commercials that like to keep it glossy and cool. And this was a commercial for Adidas, say urban clothing. That's what we were going for. So this is the look. Let's check it out in full screen. Uh, they say the mountain is the top. I say that just scratch the surface. Yeah, we started at the bottom with no option but to go up. You know what hurt is. All right, moving on to part two of this video, which is creating a film look. And this time I'm going for a look from the Grand Budapest Hotel. And I'm not going for a one to one match. What that means is that I don't want my characters to be in this room. Not necessarily. I'm just picking up on the characteristics of this image, the DNA. And uh, that's what I'm going for, which means our image is going to look very different than this guy right here. All right, let's set up our node tree and it's going to be very different than the commercial look. OK, so the first node is going to be our exposure. Second node is going to be our balance. Our third node is going to be basically a look node. OK, and that's going to go up here and then I'm going to do a parallel node. And this guy right here is going to be my hue versus options. All right, this is where we're really going to separate the skin from our look. And then after that, we're going to have our LUT and we're using the same LUT. And this is very interesting because you're going to see the difference between the two looks. It's literally going to be night and day. So after this, we're going to do a node for our skin. And then after that, we're going to have a global adjustment. And after that, we're going to have our grain and that's it. OK, this is the node tree for this. So first of all, I'm going to go in here under LUTs and drop in our LUT. And uh, obviously this just makes it look so freaking dark. So we're going to go under our exposure and fix it. This is where it's handy to pull up your reference image because when you're dialing in your exposure, you can just really get in there like in this zone. OK, so I'm going to start with my gamma. I'm going to lift my gamma up a little bit. I'm going to bring my gain down just a little bit. To preserve as much information as possible in my highlights, OK? And then I'm going to keep it somewhere around here because you see the right side. That's this image right here and see like where the top end is. And I'm trying to just keep my top end around there, too. But see, the mids are lifted quite a bit here. So I'm going to try to go up a little bit, too. Um, maybe somewhere around here. I think the rest might look just fine. One thing that I'm going to do in my global adjustment, like now I'm jumping the gun. OK, and the reason why I'm doing that, you see like the bottom on the right side. So I want my blacks here 
to be pure blacks as well. Okay, so I'm going to go under my log wheels and I'm going to pull this down until it's black like this. Okay, and then I'm going to go in my low range and just make sure that it doesn't grab anything that I don't want it to grab. So basically, that right there does the trick. So now if I do before and after, it's really just making the black points as black as it should be, like over here. See this little line? I'm just making sure that line touches the bottom, okay? So now we're looking good. Let's go back into our balance. And the first thing that I'm going to do in my balance is give it some saturation. And we're going to go to around 65-ish. Then I'm going to go into my temperature and dial it back quite a bit just to balance out the image. And then give it more saturation. Like I just really want to create as much separation as possible between my skin and my character. So I'm going to leave it somewhere around here for now. Maybe bring the saturation back a little bit like that. A little more. So something like that. And then I'm just trying to balance out my image quite a bit. Okay. So this is before, this is after. This looks like a pretty good balance to me. Now what I want to do in my look node, this is where the magic happens. I'm just going to go back into my temperature and tint and I'm going to go pretty aggressive. I'm just trying to get into this color, this world. Now, again, imagine this could be just the walls, okay? The walls were green and they probably are. They're not creating a necessarily a look, but the only way I know that this might be a look is when I look at the top end here and then the window pane here. That has that green tint. It should be just white, but it has that and that kind of gives it away. And even like his white shirt is not really white, it's green. That gives it away that this is probably a look along with these lights, okay? That's it. Now we're in our temperature and tint. Just keep an eye here and I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to take my tint and I'm just going to go boom, okay? And I feel like somewhere around here, again, not going for a one-to-one -one match, but just really, you know, catching on this vibe, you know? And uh, for now, I'm going to work with this. So I'm just going to get rid of the other image. Now I'm going to come in here and actually, you know what? It might be better to have this up too. So now we're going to work on the skin and we're going to start off with our hue versus hue option. I'm going to raise this up so we can just, you guys can see what's happening here. So I'm going to start with my red channel and I'm going to raise it up to really pull out the skin, the red in the skin. So somewhere around here, and I want to make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's really going on. Okay, now I'm going to go in my yellow and do the same thing. Obviously, go to the max first and then pull it back and see where it looks the best. Now I'm going to go under my hue versus saturation and just really crank that up. Okay. Again, go to the extreme first and then pull back. I'm going to raise my red stew a little bit, not too much though. And then I'm going to take this and bring it down a little bit. Park it somewhere around here. I'm going to go in my hue versus hue again. Pull the reds down a little bit. Pull the yellows down a little bit as well. Just a little bit. Okay, let's just move the frame a little bit closer so we can see. Maybe here. Okay, so I'm just really focusing on pretty much a mix of their skins because he is, he has a lot of yellow compared to him and then her. So let's just keep it here and kind of get it in this world. And I think we kind of are because if I do before, obviously, and guys, can you believe this? This is all happening just using hue versus hue curves. We have not qualified their skin. Okay. So this is the magic. Look at her skin and look at that there. Okay. So one thing that I'm noticing is that maybe we can just dial back on in hue versus hue. We can just dial back on our yellow a little bit to keep that warmth instead of just adding too much red in there. Something like that. 
So that's looking pretty good. And this is where I'm going to leave my hue versus hue. Now I'm going to go under hue versus luminance. And that's where we can just add, start adding some depth. So you see his shirt right there. And I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. And then for the yellow, I'm going to do the opposite. I want to add some more pop in their skin. So I'm just going to raise it up like so. Okay. Something like that. That looks really nice. Now. Let's leave the skin here. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to get in and qualify the skin. Okay. So it's looking really nice, to be honest, like where we are. So qualifying the skin is not necessary at this point, but let's just try it and see what else we can pull. So I'm going to do this. And this is why I'm qualifying the skin after the LUT, because look at how clean this key is okay at this point I just give it enough blur and we're ready to go so now I'm just gonna pop this open again and punch in quite a bit and honestly I don't even know what else we can do with the skin but let's just give it a little bit more love we're really just going the Michael Bay route right now Okay, this is what we're doing. Like, look at it. I mean, I like it because we're really going for a look. And look at it really brings him alive, too, because I feel like without it, even him. So I'm going to leave it in. It's pushed, but I love it. So this is our skin right there. And then for the global, all I wanted to do was pull everything down, which we already did in the beginning. And then in grain, because we can see there's a lot of grain in this image. If I punch in, see a lot of grain in this image. So I got to do the same because this image is way too clean. So I'm going to go in here under my grain. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to go to 35 and crank that baby up. And now we got a similar grain. Look at this to that. And if I do before. And if I do after. And then if I go back in here, look at all this. So now we've, again, see, we've created this vibe from here to here, but gave it our own flair. Okay. So this was the film look. And now what I want to do is I'm going to disable all of these and we're going to go one by one and see where we started to where we ended up. So first thing that we did is dropped in our LUT. 2383, same LUT used on Joker. Then we went into our exposure and we did our exposure, bringing everything up just about right. And then this is where we created our balance. And that was very important because that put everything in the right ballpark. So when we pull our hue versus options or our key, it gives us the best results. Then we went and created this look DNA, brought everything in the ballpark. And then in the hue versus options, did most of the heavy lifting for our skin and then just a little cherry on top went in and pulled their skin got a really good key on them now if i had any issues with the key i would have just dished this completely and would have been totally fine with it okay but look at it did really even out everything okay even her him all of that even him and then in the global adjustment we just made sure that our black points are not lifted how they are right here you can see it in the waveform and i brought that down and then added grain to just really give it that film cinematic look. And this is our final look. All right. So before we check out our final look in full screen, let's do this. OK, I'm going to click right here and I'm going to select my versions. So this gives us both of our versions. I'm going to put that to a side. So this is our commercial look and this is our film look. So I don't know about you guys, but. I am all about the film look. I mean, come on, just look at it. It looks so much cooler. So one thing that I did notice now um, in my commercial grade is look at the black points. They're not all the way touching the bottom. And we can confirm that in our scopes. See the commercial look, it's kind of lifted. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go into my commercial look. I'm going to go under the global adjustment, go into my log wheels, and I'm going to pull it down until it does touch it. And then what I want to do is again, I'm going to go in my low range and just make sure that I'm not affecting anything else. 
but the bottom part. So now they're both even. This is looking way more accurate. But guys, check it out. Two completely different looks. And like I said, same LUT used. And just look at the results. Insane. Commercial look, film look. Let's check out the film look, this look in full screen. Uh, they say the mountain is the top. I say that just scratch the surface. Yeah, we started at the bottom with no option but to go up. You know what hurt is. Hope you guys had a blast. Drop a comment below. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure to check out the link in the description for the one hour long training. And guys, one thing that I want to start doing is leave you guys with something that I really like in terms of a TV show or a movie or even a commercial. And recently what really caught my eye in terms of color grading is The Witcher. I mean, I've only seen the first episode of the show and I was blown away by all the different looks that they've used. So if you guys haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. It's Netflix original. Go check it out. In terms of color grading, top notch, way up there. On that note, stay safe, stay possessed. See you guys in the next video.